Hello, fellow choral directors, and welcome to another episode of Choral Ed. I'm your host, Micah Bland. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Today, as we conclude our series on sight reading, we're going to spend a little time talking about some alternative sight reading activities. Now, throughout this series on sight reading, we've uh, emphasized the importance of sight reading with your students every day. But doing this sometimes has a drawback that our students get tired and bored of the same exercise or of opening the method book and going to the next exercise in that book every day, chant, audiate, sing. All these things are so important for our students' development as they go to the next exercise that's sequential and developing different skills. But again, it's boring and tiresome for our students. And that's sometimes why we are met with the groan of, oh, sight reading, here we go. So these activities are designed to renew interest in sight reading. The first one I want to share with you, it, I call looking ahead or reading ahead. Now, as a teacher, one of the things I encourage my students to do when they're sight reading is look ahead in the music, not just look at the next note in the sequence and try to figure out, okay, that's Ray, that's me. But when they look ahead, they look at the full measure and kind of see the sequence of notes and the direction they're going. And so encouraging this is really important for any set reading capabilities. However, how was I to force them to look ahead, right? I could ask them, but I couldn't really force them to do it or require them to do it uh, because it's all in their head and what they're doing. And so I devised a system to make this happen where I force them to look ahead by showing an exercise up on the screen through PowerPoint and then using PowerPoint the B button is a blackout button, or just going to the next slide, uh, if you design it that way, uh, can remove the exercise from the screen. And so the students then, as they're singing along, after I remove the exercise, their task is to continue singing the exercise as far as they can. Maybe they get one or two notes, great. Maybe they can get two, a whole measure or two measures, even better, right? And so this was designed to force students to look ahead. So we're going to try that right now. You're going to see an exercise pop up on your screen here in a moment. It's going to be in bass clef starting on do. So here's do, mi, so, mi, do, one, two, and ready, sing, do. Great, so hopefully you sang do, re, mi, re, re, do, do, because I took it away after the first measure. So maybe you got one measure, maybe you got two measures. And so this is what we can do with our students to encourage them to look ahead. Now, one note about this, I would encourage you not to take the exercise away at the same point every time because the interest in the kind of some students are competitive and they want to get to the end, they want to sing as further than anybody else. That's part of the challenge and the fun and excitement about it. And so they just don't look at the first part, they just look at the last measures so they can uh, get as further than other people. And so it was important to kind of change up where you stop or take away the exercise at, maybe after two beats, maybe before the last measure. It is also helpful if you have a longer exercise that's about eight measures long because then you can really change up where you're going to stop it. And maybe they only get one measure. That's fine if you stop it after measure two uh, and there's, you know, six more measures. Well, maybe they only get one more measure. That's fine, right? And that's not the purpose of the exercise is not to get the whole thing correct. The purpose is to look ahead and practice that skill. Another activity we can do very simple is have them read it backwards, right? This renews interest. Oh, it's something different, not the left to right reading. We're now reading right to left. This is something different to mix things up. So let's try that here on this exercise. Ready and go. Do, do, re, re, mi, re, do, ti, do, ti, do. All right, a little different. You have a whole new sight reading exercise. You can, if you only have a limited number of exercises in your methods book, well, now you have, read them all backwards, and you have an additional double the amount that you have there. It is a little weird when you have like a half note and it's not lined up at the very beginning of the measure, 
but that's okay. They're, they can figure that out. One of my favorite activities I call sight reading basketball. Some people call it sight reading trash kit ball because uh, usually you shoot a mini basketball into a trash can or another box of some type. It's very simple. In essence, you're sight reading with teams and a chance to shoot a basketball. So the competitive aspect and the fun aspect of shooting a basketball into a trash can makes this very fun and exciting for students. I found it very effective for tenor and bass ensembles especially. So how does this work? The rules and the setup is very simple. You have two teams. One team sings at a time. And so you start with one team and you assign them, all right, exercise, 10 in our methods book, and they begin to read it. And then if they get it right, they get a chance to shoot a basketball, mini Nerf basketball into a trash can, like your desk trash can, or I usually use, use a cardboard box, about medium sized cardboard box, and that works very well. It's better than the trash can of being dirty or anything else, right? You have to deal with that. Uh, now, uh, not preferred to use a trash can, in my opinion. Uh, for those students singing, in order to shoot the basketball, they have to all be participating and showing their hand signs. If not, then it's a turnover and it goes to the other team. If they get it wrong, the exercise, it goes to their team, they don't get a chance to shoot. When you give them a chance to shoot, I had them step on the risers. So the first step of the risers was one point, two points, second step, third step is three points. Uh, sometimes you have a fourth step. I don't do a four point shot or anything else. Maybe if we're doing something, you know, they're, they're way behind and they want to get an extra point. I have them right across the room. If you make it, your team wins. You know, something fun like that is always exciting to incorporate. Uh, but very simple setup. All right. They score, they don't score, they get points and it goes to the next team and the next team does the same process. Of course, as you're developing this yourself, you can have your own rules and design it your own way. That's perfectly fine and acceptable. But again, it's very simple. You're just using your sight reading exercises, having them sight read it, and then you give them points. Some of my own personal rules from experience and some variations. The first variation I use is I have the other team to keep them engaged while one team is sight reading. They, the other team, has to identify the mistake or that they're not participating. That they say, all right, measure three, they missed the, the beat four, right? The beat four, the beat four. And yep, oh, they missed that, all right, and that's a turnover in that realm, in that essence. So that keeps them engaged. Now, I've done before where I said, oh, team two, they missed a note, did you notice it? And if they can't identify it, then Team one still gets a chance to shoot, right? So they have to be actively participating. And so that works very well in that, in that regard. Because of the competitive aspect, there can be some trash talking. Oh, you missed, oh, what happened? Very common. I have a rule that we don't trash talk. I give points if they're being rude in that way. So we say, good, good shot, nice try. And that's about it, right? Even their own team is like, oh, how could you miss that? They get all upset. I also uh, play long enough that everyone on the team has a chance to shoot and I just go down the row so it's not any favoritism or there's an equity there. I just go, do you want to shoot? Oh, great. Or no. And I just go to the next person. And so try to play long enough that you can get to everybody on your team. Now, some of you have very large classes that might not be possible. Smaller classes is much easier to do that. Again, uh, those are my rules. You can develop your own to help your students and help your classroom uh, management approach that you have. The last activity uh, I am most proud of and I enjoy the most, and before I forget, these are going to be available to you in the description. There's a link to a Google Drive folder, and in that folder there will be three different PowerPoint uh, files that you can download, and uh, there's three different stories. And so what this is called, I call it Sight Reading Adventures. And in essence, it's sight reading with a narrative and a choose your own adventure narrative aspect to it. And so there's three different stories. One is for fifth, sixth grade, and that's the one we're gonna look at today. And it's unison and it ends with two parts. Very simple stepwise motion, mostly a couple of 
domi so skips. The other versions, there's one for tenor bass, uh, seventh, eighth grade, two part to three part on the last slides. And then tr uh, trouble of choir, seventh, eighth grade, two part, and then ending on three part. Again, all different stories. And I hope you check them out and uh, download them and use them in your classes as best you can and, and hope your students enjoy these. So the best way to uh, understand sight reading adventures, adventures is to experience it yourself. So we're gonna do that right now. As you can see here, here's the opening slide. It will always start the same. And you read the story, and then you're gonna vote which path to take. So the story is, the bell rings on the last day of school. Summer is finally here. Where will you go on vacation? So for the beach, the students are gonna sing do. And if they wanna vote for amusement park, the students sing so. So they vote for which path they wanna take. And as they vote, you kind of see the hand signs. If you're using numbers, maybe they have a number they can show on their hands. Um, but they vote, and which one you see the most of, that's the path you take. So let's try that here. Do, mi, so, mi, do. Do for the beach, so for the amusement park. Ready, audience, your choice, and sing. Do, all right, we're gonna pretend you all chose do, because I, I can't hear what you're singing out there. Hopefully you're participating. And so what you will do then is you'll click on the solfege syllable because it's a hyperlink and that will take you to the next slide. If you don't click on the hyperlink and you just go down arrow on the PowerPoint, it's gonna be the wrong order. You're gonna go through all 25 to 30 slides because there's many, many different paths you can take. And so when you make a choice, that will take you directly to the hyperlink, the page or the slide of that story. For example, the amusement park doesn't start until slide 15, and so you have to jump all the way down there. So then you read the sight reading exercise. I sure love to swim and play at the sandy beach. You're welcome to sing it on text. You can sing it on solfege, numbers. You can sing it once on solfege and then on text, so do it twice. You could have half the choir sing text, half the choir sing solfege, half the, uh, the choir sing text, or the choir sing solfege, the teacher sing text. Whatever you want to do, whatever works for your students is great. I also want to note here, you can put in your own sight reading exercises and add in text. Perfectly fine. You can even make up your own stories. All works. Then you read the story. Gathering your swimsuit towel and sunscreen, you take off for the beach. But which way should you go? The highway is faster, but might have traffic while the secret route is much longer, but sure to avoid any delays. And then we vote again, me for taking the highway, do for taking the secret route, and audit your choice. Ready, sing. Me, I'm gonna pretend we all sing me because I wanna point out to you, the solfege that you sing, with the exception of the very first slide, the solfege that you sing is the starting pitch of the next exercise. Mi, re, do, re, re. Right, and then you read the story. You fly down the highway making great time. You can almost smell the ocean. All of a sudden, the highway comes to a standstill. Oh no, an 18-wheeler has crashed and spilled its cargo of cow manure all over the highway. You decide to pass the time by playing a game or stop to wait it out at a rest stop. And so again, I'm gonna show you so, waiting out at a rest stop, so you can see that it starts on so me, so me, right? And uh, the path you take is all gonna be in the same key, I believe. For this example, all of the beach exercises are in the key of F. All the amusement park exercises are in the key of G. Uh, I could have that wrong, but um, they should all be in the same key as you go through one path or the other. And then again, you make a choice, left or right. And now we're on our last slide. There won't be any hyperlinks or any choices here. Great choice, it's a beautiful day. You pull right up to the beach, park the car, but before you can get out in the water, you must first sing in two parts. Oh man making it so difficult for us. And then you can play all day. I just wanna highlight here that part one is and will always be the very first exercise the students sing. I sure love to swim and play at the sandy beach. And part two, again, this is for fifth, sixth grade. Very simple, do, do, ti, ti, do, do, ti, do, do, ti, ti, do. Two notes, very simple harmony part. So that is sight reading adventures for you. I, I hope you find those enjoyable to include with your students. 
And all these activities, again, why do we incorporate these? Why are these important? They are unique and they are different from the same old approach of chant, audiate, sing in our methods book, turn to the next exercise. And that just gets tiring for our students. They are important because there are skills developed and it's a sequential order in that methods book. But how I personally incorpor incorporate these types of activities, and there's others we've talked about in previous episodes, for example, audiation are some other activities to include, is to do this once or twice a week. So maybe on Friday you play sight reading basketball or you do sight reading adventures. On Wednesday, maybe you do some uh, reading ahead activity or you do um, as a warm up. On Tuesday, you do an audiate a familiar song and try to identify it. So try to mix these in as additional activities and some different activities from the standard chant, audiate, sing in your methods book. Now, of course, as I already pointed out, singing and uh, sight reading every day is imperative to our students' development. And so this is not to skip a day. This is not to supplement. This is not to replace, I should use that word, replace your everyday methods book approach. But this is to supplement it and kind of re-energize interest in sight reading. So I hope you are able to implement these in your classes. I hope your students enjoy them. I know from personal experience, my students always enjoy these activities. And as always, thanks for watching. And I hope you continue to inspire the future leaders of our world through this wonderful gift we call music. Thanks.